So Tom, after the um, first couple of international conferences on MH, uh, standards were developed for the caffeine halothane contracture testing. And right. that's what the biopsy centers in North America have been using since. Right. Um, along the time of having made the biochemical discovery was the really early years of uh, uh, new genomic testing that, and the equipment that became available for that. So now uh, we understand at least one very specific target that has a number of mutations that are involved with triggering the disease malignant hyperthermia. So tell us about the ryanidine receptor and what we know. Right. The, the ryanidine receptor uh, was named ryanidine because there was an alkaloid called ryanidine. And, and what's really interesting is that at the first international symposium on malignant hyperthermia, there was a pres presentation about ryanidine-induced contractures because it was known that ryanidine would, would produce contractures. But at that time, no one had any idea that that would be linked to this calcium channel. Uh, and it was realized that there, there was a calcium channel there. And uh, in fact, Dr. Gerhard Meisner here at the University of North Carolina did some significant work on isolating and purifying the channel and actually sequencing the amino acid content of that channel. And, uh, and the way he did that was <clears throat> they knew that ryanidine bound to this protein. So they take radioactive ryanidine attached to the channel and, and then ran through purification processes tracking the radioactivity and found this enormous molecule. Uh, it had four different subunits and had a molecular weight of 454,000. It was one of the largest proteins in, in, in biology. And so because they used ryanidine to attach to, to, to discover the channel, they referred to it as the ryanidine receptor calcium channel because the, there was a receptor to which the ryanidine bound. So that's how it got its name. And uh, <clears throat> after its discovery and, and realizing that there was a link between calcium release, calcium channel, and malignant hyperthermia, then they started sequencing uh, the, the, uh, the gene uh, in animals, in the pigs, and David McLennan did in fact find the mutation for the ryanidine receptor in the pig and later on they started beginning, started finding mutations in this channel in MH humans. Uh, and we thought then, in fact, when, when David McClendon found the mutation in the pig, I said, we've got it, that's it. Now we know no more muscle biopsies, we've got it. Well, that was a very naive assumption because in this enormous protein molecule, you can have thousands of mutations that, that might predispose to malignant hyperthermia. So, Unfortunately, we, we can't use that as the exclusive test and it doesn't eliminate the muscle biopsy because uh, uh, actually at this point in time, I think uh, probably only 50 to 70 percent of the MH susceptible families have a, a ryanidine receptor mutation. So there appears to be other mutational sites that might be pre predisposing to malignant hyperthermia. So that makes the utilization of <coughs> genes for diagnosing latent hyperthermia very limited at this time, unfortunately. So there's two parts to the story I want to uh, uh, just have you help express to our viewers. So first, within the ryanidine receptor itself, there are places for thousands of mutations. And not all of those mutations will result in MH susceptibility. Exactly. And then there are some that we have now determined are causal because they've been found in two separate families and they've been found to have genotype, phenotype uh, concordance to suggest that because of this inheritance, these are indeed causative mutations. Right. And then we know that certain muscle diseases also share mutations in certain areas of the ryanidine receptors, such as central core disease, that may be associated and or uh, exactly the same as the one of the mutations that it allows MH susceptibility to occur.